Pornography, um, it really, really messed up my life in a lot of ways. You know him as the hunky actor on the show Brooklyn Nine-Nine, or maybe as the Old Spice guy. But Terry Crews also has a dirty little secret he wants you to know about. He had a porn addiction, and he's taken to Facebook to confess. The subject is dirty little secret. And, you know, for years, years, my dirty little secret was that I was addicted to pornography for years. Some people deny, they say, hey man, you know, you can't really be addicted to pornography, there's no way. But I'm gonna tell you something, if day turns into night and you are still watching, you probably got a problem. The new video series has been viewed millions of times and garnered tens of thousands of comments. And tonight fans are wondering why a celebrity like Terry Crews would come out just so publicly about something that is often shaming, stigmatizing, and kept quiet. Back with Rolanda, Jane, Darren, and Tiffany. And Darren, you and I, during the commercial break, were talking about exactly this point. Yeah, and, and I speak to people all across the country about this very thing when I do my keynote speaking. That is, for me, I found so much value in taking things that I thought were secret, that were the most shameful, shameful things shameful. that I had ever done. The overdoses and car wrecks and flunking out of college, like all that stuff. The And, and more, be fair. And, and more. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> stuff you won't stare on TV yet. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's yeah. cleaned up. Yeah. But taking that and making it, instead of the shameful secret. I started by sharing it with one person and then finally to be able to share it publicly, it just takes all of the weight out of and, that. And Jane, it makes it so you can flip it and start to help other people, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And as a person who's a recovering alcoholic with knock on wood, if there's wood around here, 21 years of sobriety yeah. in a couple of <laughs> weeks. But, but here's the thing. Internet porn is a real addiction. Yep. And people who say that porn is an addiction, they're just lying because the internet has supersized porn. Yep. To no. an incredible degree, and the nasty porn you can get within seconds. Well, that's right. It's more, okay. more arousing than it's ever been, so it's usurping the brain's drive system again, which is, <laughs> my, my brain out, it's way, way, way inside here somewhere. Uh, and it's the drive system that is really the survival system itself. And now, not only do we have this hyper-intense material that people can be exposed to, sometimes at a young age, we all carry effectively what is a crack pipe with us at all time, which is mm. the, the phone where they yeah. can access this stuff. Here's how Terry describes how porn altered his brain. My issue was, and is with pornography, is that it changes the way you think about people. People become objects. People become, you know, body parts. They become things to be used rather than people to be loved. And it really, really, you know, you start to change the way you see people and you start to use people. You start to feel like, you know, you're the man and they're just, you know, whatever. And then his marriage got affected. He goes into that too. Take a look. My wife was like, I'm out. And you know what? I did not get help so that I could get my wife back. I just want to tell you that. I got help because I needed it. My, my wife could have decided I'm gone and that would have been it. And you know what? Ain't nothing else could have done about it because that was her choice. But she did decide to stay with me because she knew I was repentant. She knew I was going to get help and she knew I was sorry. But Tiffany, it's oftentimes a loss that get, gets the addict's attention and particularly with things like porn addiction, that's what may have gotten, who knows what it saved him from, what misery sure. was ahead. But, but a reminder also that typically when someone's involved with a porn addict, they too need to get some treatment. Absolutely. That's why groups like Al-Anon are so important in psychotherapy, especially is so important because it doesn't just affect the person that is using porn or utilizing it. It definitely affects the entire family. And generally, when someone is addicted to porn, it is so engrossed in that culture, uh, their family definitely suffers because they don't connect with their family. They've lost some element of communication and, and stimulation, if you will, within the family system, and they seek it outside of that. Yeah, they've lost the real connection. Connection mm -hmm. is the solution. And when there's disconnect, there's dysregulation, and people are searching for intense experiences to make them feel, feel better, leave their emptiness behind, leave their for pain sure. behind. And if you think you have a problem, here's a good ways to tell. Uh, you lost control. Hurting yourself, your work, your family, your legal status, your financial status, and something that used to be enjoyable, no longer enjoyable, but loss of control is that big, big, you've tried to cut down, you've tried to stop, but you can't. Tiffany, do we have any numbers about how many people are suffering with this today? 
Um, I don't have specific numbers, Drew, but I, I know I, that it is. It I've is heard of the ten percent of the population are having some problem with this. I, and I, I would say it's probably more. Oh yeah, yeah, women, women. That's right. There women. is a certain percentage, and people always think of it as a male and a young male problem. Not so much. Mm -mm. It's many. But what else do we have here about Terry? I think I have another qu another piece of uh, tape to show you with him. There it is. For those who don't understand addiction, Cruz made this analogy. I had to realize when I was depressed. I had to realize when I was sad about something or when I was feeling lonely, because those were the times that I was more likely to use pornography. Uh, the times when I would, you know, something really bad happened or some, I, I had my heart broken, but I thought I was going to get something that didn't happen. And those times, it's just like eating, you know, when you feel sad or lonely, you grab food. And instead of food, for me, it would be pornography. Isn't that, Jane, pretty vivid? That's, that's that. That's that addictive thing. And I applaud him for yeah, coming. I do, too. Absolutely. I do, because too. Because this is rampant in America. And the thing is, it is mostly men, and the wives don't know. When your husband says, honey, go to sleep, I'm going to check the scores. <laughs> but can I just say this? Please. I know Terry and yes. Rebecca, and they are just the most beautiful couple. Yes. They're very much into their faith, and I know that's what keeps them together. But what I really appreciate about what Terry's doing, he's also saying, man up, men. Mm -hmm. This is an issue, and this yeah. is something we have to address because it affects our entire family. Well, and be, being aware, being aware. It, we see that people go through life one or two ways, either an example of what's possible or a warning, and clearly Terry, an example here, and that's a wonderful thing. I, hey, listen, everybody's ever met this guy that I know thinks he's a great guy, whether he's a porn addict or not, the fact that he's now coming clean about this, he feels better, and he's helping other people, that's when you know somebody's really engaged in their treatment and their recovery, when they're helping others. Thank you, panelists. We do appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.